Bella Italia. On the lush green mountains, the cows are enjoying another beautiful day, surrounded by majestic scenery. This is the valley of Val d'Isole in northern Italy. Thousands of apple trees are growing on the rich farmland, and the Alpine village is full of historical buildings. Many ancient churches, but only one World Cup. And it's not any World Cup. It's the big final of the 2011 UCI Mountain Bike World Cup presented by Shimano. The excitement is in the air. While the men's cross-country title has already been won by the Czech rider Jaroslav Kolhavy, the women's title is still up for grabs. It's the last World Cup of the season, round number seven, and the last chance to take home the final victory. There will be an intense competition for individual victory in this final leading up to the World Championships in two weeks' time. But one thing's for sure, under the boiling sun of Italy, the World Cup final is going to be really hot. Ciao a tutti, sono Marco Aurelio Fontana from Italy and I just rode uh, the last uh, UCI World Cup in uh, Val di Sole, Italy, my own country. It's going to be a really hard course, it's, I think it's the hardest course in the World Cup from the beginning on. It's going to be some really steep and short climb where the most powerful guys, they will make the difference. Then uh, once we come into the feeding area, uh, we will hit some technical section, like downhill section, stones and stuff. So um, it's going to be uh, not, not really easy. Then as soon as we are here, close to, the, close to the finish, we hit the feeding. And then there is a long, the longest climb uh, going up this way. And uh, we come to the last section, which is a, kind of a fast uh, descent. And then we hit uh, the last part, which is on the grass. And uh, it's going to be the better one for overtaking and drink some water as well, because uh, the pace is going to be really high and uh, it will be really tough to, to recover and then uh, to get it till the finish. Enjoy the race, enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the coffee here in Italy, of course. And uh, see you, right? Cheers. Mille grazie Marco. But before we see the women race for the very last time this year, we look back at this exciting World Cup season. The first stop on the World Cup circuit took us all the way to the African continent. The Chinese rider, Ren Ching Wang, returned to the women's field after nearly two years absence. She let everyone know she was back with a vengeance, sprinting up from the near back of the field to take the victory and don the leader's jersey. Last year's under-23 champion, Julie Bressett, clearly made the move to the elite ranks with a silver medal performance. And for the next race, she was aiming for gold. At the second World Cup in Derby Forest, I won the first elite World Cup ever. It was a great moment because I didn't think I was on this level. I spent the whole race with the Chinese rider Ren. The two of us battled for the whole race. But on the very last lap, Ren cracked. That's what happened in Derby Forest, a great moment, which I will keep in my memory forever. My second World Cup win was right after Derby Forest in Offenburg. It was a bit different for me because I started with the number one bike plate and the leader's jersey, and I was a bit nervous. Catherine Penville, who was good on the course, attacked, but I managed to keep up. In the last lap, I had a 20-second gap. I managed to keep up my speed and win. It was really good, because I got the confirmation that I really improved, and I went to a new level this season. The first win I had was at Mont Saint Anne, uh, home country, always nice to win there. It uh, was shaping up to be a really tight battle. Like I, uh, I got off to the off the front, but Julie was right behind me. Unfortunately, she had a pretty bad crash on the rocks, and uh, that allowed me to to get away and keep working on establishing a gap.
It was in Wyndham in the USA where I won my third World Cup. It was a really nice course with a really exciting battle against Catherine Pendrell. This race was special because I was worried after my race in Mont Saint Anne where I had a big crash. From the very beginning I was fighting it out with Catherine and when I arrived at the end of the last downhill I was able to keep my front position and win. Last weekend, Nove Mesto, yeah, it was a fantastic course. Um, you know, the, the trails felt pretty similar to riding in Canada and British Columbia. And so I really enjoyed that. The fans were awesome. They had so many people came out and were just really excited to, to have such high caliber racing there. Um, so like the course, like the crowds and uh, happy to go back. So Catherine Pendrell comes into the final race, 140 points behind Bresses in the World Cup overall standings. A significant margin, but if Pendrel wins, the French still has to finish top eight to wrap it up. And already some of the riders are crashing right off the starting line. This race is going to be really hard on the 71 riders. All in all, the best attended World Cup in history. So the Italian champion Eva Lechner leading the group, but Catherine Pendrel makes an attack. Pendrel told us before the race that she's got nothing to lose and she's going to go as hard as she can right from the start. And it looks like she's staying true to her words. 2004 Olympic gold medalist, multiple world champion and new European champion Gunrita Dalla from Norway has fought away to the front. Catherine Pendrel still setting the pace for the women's field, but Julie Bresset hot on her heels. And it's the end of lap one, four more laps to go, and Pendrel already has established a 22-second gap between her and the just 22-year-old Julie Bressett. Second and third right together now, a battle between the French and the Norwegian rider, but Bressett we know is a real great climber. And so is Pendrel, who has managed to keep the lead. So it's young and eager against old and experienced. 38-year-old Dalla Flesia managed to overtake Bressit, but the chasing group are closing in right behind him. We see the leader heading back on the switchback track. Bressit and Dalla Flesia still trying to catch up, and the Norwegian starts an attack on the climb and sets herself into second position. So the top two riders now riding down the switchback track. Here's Pendrel, who's just completed two laps out of five, and she's leaving her other competitors way behind. You can bet she's in it to win it. Winning 26 World Cups in her career already, the Norwegian has extended her lead. Bresses looks like she's playing it safe. The French rider knows if she stays in third place, she'll still be able to win the overall. And from the second place, we switch right back to the first place. On this track, the riders have a good overview of where they stand in the race. Coming down the very technical track, the Norwegian sticks to her second position on this dusty track. The cross-country legend is having a great comeback here in Italy today. Meanwhile, Catherine Pendrel still got two laps ahead of her. And last year's World Cup winner in Val de Sol, Maja Wachowska, fought her way up to fourth place. The Polish rider knows from last year that she can do really good on this track. But Bresset is determined to keep her third position. And having no battles to fight is the Luna team rider. It looks like Pendrell can take home her seventh World Cup. A great motivation boost for the World Championships in two weeks. Meanwhile, there are no changes in the chasing group behind her. Dalla Flesia second, Bresset third, and Varshovska fourth. And the weather seems to be getting hotter by the minute. The 27-year-old current world champion, Maya Varshovska, showing off her great form two weeks before the world championships in Champere in Switzerland. But there is no way anyone can stop Catherine Pendrel from winning her first World Cup on Italian soil. Voschowska overtook Dalla Flesia and is now in second place with Bresset nowhere to be seen. Coming down the track on the grassy section with a lot of chances to overtake here. 
and this is exactly what the Norwegian rider does. Sets herself into second position, just 17 seconds behind Pentrell. And it looks like Pendrell has been finding it difficult on the fourth lap. She just started her last lap and has got to watch out. The Polish and the Norwegian rider are getting closer. Julie Bresset trying hard to keep a fourth position because that would make her the winner of the World Cup overall today. Bresset and Pendrell just passing each other. Both riders are going to celebrate a big win today. The Polish rider is still in second position with a much bigger gap now to Dalaflesia, but how far away is our current leader Pendrell? And here she comes into the finish area, winning her third World Cup in 2011. The Canadian Catherine Pendrell, what a great way to end this season. The second place goes to the Polish rider Maja Wlaszowska here on her favourite track and she's got real good reason to cheer. It's her best World Cup result this season. And another best result of the year goes to the Norwegian rider Gunri Tadala Flesia, 42 seconds behind Pendrell, finishing third. I knew it was going to be a short race so uh could go out hard. Um, yeah, it was hot, it was hard, lots of climbing. <laughs> um, got away early and just felt good, was able to ride steady and then had a stupid little crash and got my stem all twisted and couldn't get it back. But uh, was able to, I was just climbing a bit stronger today, so I was able to get it ahead, felt good. And here she comes, the 2011 World Cup winner, Julie Bresset from France, finishing this race in Val d'Isol in fourth place. And what a great success for the young rider. Yeah, today uh, I felt uh, very good. Uh, I am very happy because uh, I am a leader. I win the, the standing of the, the World Cup, it's very great. Uh, today the race uh, was very hard, with the uh, tracks is hard and the weather uh, is very hot. And after her win in Nova Mesto last weekend, Pendrel once again on top of the podium. In second we have Vlasovska, Dalaflesia third, Bresset fourth and Lechner in fifth. And getting to raise the Crystal Trophy is Julie Bresset, the new World Cup champion. Last year's World Cup champion Pendrell takes second place, Kalantiva comes third, Primont fourth, Lechner in fifth. Now we're going to take a look at this year's World Cup races for the elite men. And there was one rider clearly dominating the field. But let's go back and start from the beginning. Yeah, I won the first World Cup in Peter Maritzburg, South Africa. Uh, it was an awesome start for me in the season. Uh, there was one nice section, uh, the rock garden was really technical. And uh, yeah, there I, I took this decision and then uh, get a gap to Absalon and uh, won the race with maybe 10 to 20 seconds uh, advance to Absalon. The second World Cup took place in Delby Forest, which is maybe one of my favourite tracks. I decided the race pretty much from the start in a kind of start-finish style, which was really unbelievable. It was also the first win on my 29er bike, so of course not only me, but the entire team was real happy that it finally showed that the bike is really exceptional and very fast, especially on the tracks like Dalby Forest. So I won the World Cup in Offenburg and it was a really nice day for me because it was my first goal of the season. It was a big fight uh, with Kulavi until, uh, until the last lap because I attacked in the third lap, I think, and he came from the back and uh, I had the gap of uh, 30 or 40 seconds and I keep it until the finish line.
Ducks of the Reap will have months on turn. Well, the World yeah, Cup in Mount St. Like Anne is regarding the technical aspects one of the most beautiful tracks. Last year already, I was able to celebrate a first success in the World Championships where I ended up second, which was the perfect finish to my successful season. But talking about the race, the track is very technical and slow, but all in all, I think it fits into this style of mountain biking and there are definitely should be more tracks like it. Windham. Yeah, Windham. Well, of Windham, I've only got good memories. I won all of the races that I raced there. Okay, it's only been two so far. But the track is a classic. It's real old school. Same as in Mount St. Anne, I managed to win the race there at the start finish style, where I again beat Nino Schurter, who finished in second after me. Nova Mesto in Moravia. Well, I think after last week, it's my very, very favourite track. And I have to say, it's been kind of the biggest race in my career because the atmosphere there was just incredible and unrepeatable. I've never experienced anything like it before. So here are the top three riders of 2011. French rider Julian Absalon riding for Orbea. Swiss rider Nino Schurter from the Scott Swiss Power MTB racing team who won here last year and the man who already has won the 2011 World Cup overall Czech rider Yaroslav Kulhaly riding for Specialized Racing A starting loop and six laps of four and a half kilometers are ahead of 121 riders and right from the start Yaroslav Kulhaly is taking control at the front and leading the pace with Manuel Fumik, Nino Schurter and Florian Vogel joining him on the top four leading group the first climb of the race, and we have Kulhavy, Schurter, Fogel, Fontana, and Fumik. And here comes Schurter starting his first attack, passing the group, and setting himself out in front of Kulhavy. The Swiss rider doesn't want the new World Cup champion to get away like in the last races, and he's eager to win one more World Cup. But Schurter can't shake Kulhavy off of his back as they descend down the track. They're being followed by Schurter's teammate Fogel and the Spanish rider Sergio Montecon Guterres, probably the only rider who's used to riding in these hot weather conditions in the baking sunshine. And the track, really, really dry and dusty today, makes it even harder. Looking back over his shoulder, Schurter lets Colhaby pass him on the feed zone. The leading group has finished their first lap and still remain close together. The Swiss teammates Schurter and Vogel are leading the group at the climb. Compared to the previous races, Kulhavy is not setting the same pace as usual at the moment. The Czech rider losing a little bit of touch here on the climb, working his way through lap two. Maybe he wants to save his strength for the World Championships in two weeks' time. The top three riders working their way down the switchbacks, getting away from the group. The Swiss dynamic duo is working hard, trying to create a gap between them and Kulhavy. But so far, they can't shake the Czech rider off. Kulhavy, who finished sixth here in Valdesol last year, is having no problems to keep up with them. They're approaching the feed zone right before the end of round two. Fogel sprays himself down with water. This direct sunlight on the open sections is incredible. The riders getting a bit of a cool down in the forest, but it's not enough really to recover. And that's Julian Absalon behind Kulhavy, who wants to get up to the leading group to mix it up with the top three. It's a big margin he's got to make up, but if anyone can do it, he can. Fogel and Schurter, who have worked out a tactic before the race, still leading. Absalon still sitting in fourth place. And here we can see the top three again, who finished the climb, are now back on the descent. The Swiss riders look like they're in top form at the right time of the year, right before the World Championships. Maybe their high altitude training in San Maurice last month is finally paying off. 
into the feed zone shortly before the end of round three. Colhavy spraying his legs, trying to keep his body temperature down in this heat. These three riders have been together since the first half of the race. And as we are entering the second half, Fogel attacks from the back. And we can see Kulhavy has gone to the lead. But the Swiss riders are taking back the control, both overtaking the Czech rider on the steep climb. And Absalon didn't manage to get any closer to the leading group, as we can see on this part of the track. On the technical descent, Culhavy squeezed himself between Fogel and Schurter. But once more, the Swiss duo wants to work together in the front as a team as Schurter takes over the lead. The Swiss rider won the under-23 championships on this track and also won last year's World Cup here in Val de Sol. And he's the first to shoot down the downhill part of the track, followed by Fogel and then Culhavy. Just two more laps to go, and what an exciting race is brewing up. Culhavy looking big on his 29er bike compared to the Swiss riders. He's also one of the heaviest men in the field because he's like real tall. And is this going to work out to be a battle between Schurter and Culhavy? Florian Fogel falling victim to the pace and slowly falling back. And it looks like a change of positions has happened at the front. Yaroslav Kolhavy leading into the descent now. But Nino Schurter doesn't want to lose touch and is keeping a close eye on the Czech rider. Schurter, who has won three World Cups in his career so far, is trying to get in the lead just as soon as he can and make it his fourth win. These two really flying down the track, top speed. And these two start their last lap. Nino Schurter attacks Kolhavy on the climb, trying to get away from the Czech rider, but Kolhavy is just glued to his back wheel. He's up for a great World Cup battle between the number one and the number two. And it looks like the temperatures are really affecting Fogel, who's got his shirt fully undone. This heat has taken his toll and he's falling back even more. So Kulhavy trying to put the pace on and burn off the Swiss rider. But in Schurter, he's found a worthy competitor today. And as we come into the last straight of the race, who's going to be the better sprinter? Both guys giving it everything they've got. Culhavy taking a quick look over his shoulder there at Schurter, who's pedalling for his life. But in the end, it's going to be Culhavy who proves to be the better sprinter. The Swiss rider looking disappointed as Culhavy wins his sixth World Cup. Schurter just collapsing on the ground after his first ever sprint finish against Culhavy. What an amazing final race. Kulhavy's also out of breath, but at least he's able to get up, surrounded by his triumphant specialised team. And Schurter's teammate Florian Fogel has zipped up his jersey as he crosses the line in third place. The best result of the season. Julian Absalon, the legend, coming in to take fourth place, two minutes and five seconds down behind the leader, Yaroslav Kulhavy. It was incredible because uh, Nina Schurter is a really good sprinter. I think I was better because I had 29 and uh, this uh, finish line, uh, it was really long. The Czech rider wrapped up his incredible season with yet another World Cup win. Joining him on the podium, Schurter, Fogel, Absalon and Fluckinger. And here are the results for the final race in Val de Sol with five Swiss riders in the top eight. But we're not finished yet. Czech super rider Yaroslav Kulhavy is the new 2011 World Cup winner and he puts on his white jersey that he's going to wear for all the next year. In second place, Schurter, Absalon remains third, world champion Hamida in fourth and Marot in fifth.
So it's time to say goodbye, or arrivederci. The World Cup season has come to an end as the riders are getting ready for the World Championships in Champere, Switzerland in two weeks. We're going to say ciao from Bella Italia. See you next year.